Welcome, Kashit Kakar. You're the CTO and digital architect for uh, Two Blockchain, which uh, calls itself a Dutch blockchain powerhouse. Correct. That is interesting. Why are you a Dutch blockchain powerhouse? So basically, uh, when we look at Two Blockchain and you look at the team, it's a multidisciplinary team. Uh, we have people who have from legal background, strategy background, people who are looking at blockchain from technology perspective, but also from different functional angles. Mm -hmm. That's one aspect. Second, we are very fortunate that we have worked into different industry solutions for healthcare, for utilities and others. And we started this journey with a very open mind. So we said, okay, we want to explore this space as broadly as possible. We want to work with many different blockchain fabrics. So we want to work with Bitcoin, but we also want to work with Hyperledger. We also want to work with multi-chain, big chain, DB, you name it. Mm -hmm. So we basically have a very broad perspective on technology, on industry solutions, and that's why we call it a Dutch blockchain powerhouse, because we are basically culminating a lot of knowledge around this ecosystem and what it means for other industries. Okay. On your website, I noticed that uh, your team also has two women, which I think is still special. Uh, are there enough women working in the field of blockchain technology already? Yes, there are. So, for, for example, uh, one of the co-founders of Two Blockchain is a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one more member uh, who is also uh, on the board. If we look at the next year, we are getting three more women on board. We will be training them on blockchain. Uh, and we are, I think it's, it's a good mixture of men and women, sort of a multidisciplinary and, and a diverse team. And that helps a lot. I think uh, it's a different perspective that you get when you have a ni nice balance of men as well as women in the team. Of course, if you look at cryptography or deep technical knowledge, then you have less women in this space. Uh, but I think over time, you will see more and more, more coming into computer science and cryptography. Okay. Do you, um, from your personal history, have you been a developer? Yes, so I have an engineering background. Mm -hmm. I've done six years of engineering in India, I've done my master's at TU Delft in uh, information technology management. And uh, I've been into various functions, into development, but also into design, into architecture. And today I'm at, at, at the, let's say, uh, boundary of business as well as technology. Mostly all of my career, I have been applying technology into, into real life. So that's the core. Can you remember when you first heard about blockchain technology? Um, long time back, uh, so I, yeah, in the beginning of the year, it feels long time because it mm. has moved so fast. Uh, so I heard about blockchain, uh, I think through a friend of mine who mentioned about it and he mentioned about Bitcoin, so it was, it was very early days, I think, uh, beginning of this year. And um, what piqued your interest? So the architectural innovation in blockchain is what piqued my interest. Uh, if you look at uh, our core, we mainly focus on breakthrough innovations which require the shift in the architecture of how systems are connected, how components are connected with each other. And the key interest for us is how blockchain is enabling distributed, trusted, uh, secure environment, which is a shift in architecture from a centralized way or a, or a web-based way where we say, you know, you have a client-server architecture or you have a web-based architecture. It is much more centralized, whereas this is enabling much more decentralized, trusted environment. So from that perspective, we are very much interested in, in exploring and enabling the architectural part of, of the innovation in blockchain. How do you see that if you realize that the society we live in has become very used to central parties handing out the trust, so to speak. Correct. Uh, do you think that is going to be a tough road or do you think it will uh, manifest itself? So I'm a firm believer that you uh, don't necessarily change the system uh, unless you really have a big major humanity problem. I think that this technology helps us to improve our existing system. Mm -hmm. uh, we see a lot of challenges today that are very difficult in centralized systems where we have trusted government, for example, where we have trusted banks, for example, and we can improve these existing systems a lot by applying this technology. So without necessarily changing the system or you know having one nation based mm -hmm. on blockchain, I think we can do much better by, for example, improving our healthcare system or by improving our social security system 
or by improving our, let's say, ability to manage fraud within, within the system and so on and so forth. So there are many applications that this technology allows us to, to enable, which can be embedded into the existing system, but differently, which, which allows us to improve cost factors by tenfold, hundredfold. It allows us to, for example, increase the efficiency, the trust level, and at the end of the day, also, it enables citizens to do many good things. For example, citizens today cannot necessarily know or choose the privacy control that they have, but in the future, they will be able to granular select who has access to the data, when is the data access, and for what purpose. Okay. So that we can do. Still, blockchain technology is a very young field. What do you expect we can achieve in the coming three to five years? So in the three to five years, I think the major theme will be on standardization. I think we are exploring a lot. We are creating a lot of standards, but ultimately we need to form a standard. Uh, there are some good things happening in that space. So uh, that is one part of it, interoperability of different blockchains. That is the second part of it. So in the next three to five years, you will see evolution in how multiple blockchains work together. You will also see evolution in standardization, so there will be much larger adoption of certain standards, which will allow us to have the economy of scale. Uh, it will also allow us to have a large pool of resources who are able to work on those standards and, and build new applications. So uh, currently we have a huge uh, ecosystem with so many blockchains that will consolidate in the next three to five years. We will have less number of, of large blockchains. Final question, what would your advice be for an interested programmer to get started in the world of blockchain technology? Yeah, so this is, this is the right moment. Perhaps this is the best time for anybody who is interested into computer science, into programming, into development. This is the best time to actually start because it is at a very early stage. You know, we still are just scratching the first initial surface, which means it's a very nascent stage, very, very, uh, very bottom up and you become a sort of a good contributor uh, to, the, to the ecosystem, to the, to the society as a whole. So this, this is an ideal time. And if you see at this hackathon, for example, or if you see at what is happening as a whole, you get so many opportunities to learn, to build new stuff. It's very easy to get in. Uh, you just have to you know, be, be interested in this field. Sounds like a plan. Thank you very much. Thank you.